Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the podcast. This this episode is going to be MLB recap. My first time doing it. So, last last episode I did say uh that I was going to post another one that uh last week, but after uh, after I recorded that, I realized there was probably no possibility of that happening. So this is going to be the schedule. We're going to do Tuesdays and either Thursdays or Fridays. I don't know. We will figure that out as we go. But right now we are doing automatically Tuesdays. Tuesdays is a lock. It's either Thursday or Friday. I guess that's up to whatever I can do. I will post on Thursday or Friday. Anyways, let's get into the breakdown of the baseball news as it's finally back. Finally with fans. I cannot tell you how much I missed having the real fan crowds and how the fake crowd noise really annoyed the shit out of me. It was so goddamn annoying. So goddamn annoying. So... I'm so happy that that's that we have real fans back and I'm really happy that my New York Yankees started off okay. We lost the series against Toronto. Struggled to score runs, which is a very very interesting thing coming from the Yankees, which seem to never struggle to score runs. Seemed like Toronto really had our number in the pitching department. I like that Gary hit two home runs in the series, which gave us a big boost, especially that second home run, which was pretty much the difference in us winning that ball game. But for us to only to have only one game of scoring three or more runs is is not like the Yankees, but. Earlier today, which right now it is early, like midnight on Tuesday. So when I say today's game, I mean Monday's game. We finally broke out. Finally scored some runs. And put up a seven spot on Baltimore, who all of a sudden is 3-0. and Thank you, Boston, I guess. Man, Boston's going to be trash, but I digress. The Yankees did what they had to do against Baltimore. They always have Baltimore's number. And Montgomery looked fantastic. Very efficient. Going into the fifth inning, I think he had 52 pitches. Which is absolutely insane. He was on the money tonight. And I, I have gone on record as to saying I think Montgomery is close to his ceiling and that's why I thought that Divey Garcia should have gotten that spot over him but if if he keeps putting up outings like that I may have to eat my words I really may have to that that outing showed me that he isn't at his ceiling and I really wish they they extended him a little longer but Six innings is good enough. He was only at 70-something pitches. But coming off of an arm injury, they kind of wanted to... They wanted to make sure that they have him for the rest of the season. Because, man, he... that I cannot tell you how much that game opened my eyes to how good Montgomery is. Jordan Montgomery... If he can continue to put out outings like that, or even close to that, doesn't even have to be a shutout, just outings like that, very efficient like that, saving the bullpen, he could be a legit starter in this league. He could be a solid two in the Yankees rotation, and in a lot of rotations, if he plays like that, he's a one. Obviously, in the Yankees rotation, we got Garrett Cole, so he's not going to be a one. But he's showing us he has 
the potential that I didn't think he had. And yes, it was only one game. I may be overreacting to it, but again, it just surprised me knowing what I thought going into this season, which was I thought he he kind of hit his potential bar, which was about a high three ERA guy who will give you solid innings as a four or five starter at best. He showed me that he has the potential to be a two, if not a one, if not on the Yankees, which is very scary to think of. Because Garrett Cole, when he's on, is lights out. Corey Kluber, when he's on, is lights out. Domingo Herman, when he's on, is very good. Now if you get Montgomery and then now if you get Montgomery when he's on, now we know he's lights out. Jamison Tyone, we still have a question mark on, but man, that was an impressive outing. Good for Jordan Montgomery. What an outing. But I'm happy the Yankees are back on track and hopefully they can continue on this upward trajectory. But anyways, let's move on to a rookie that shocked the world to start this week. Yermin Mercedes. God damn. So if you want to know more about this kid, there's a, there's a YouTuber that did a really good video on him named giraffe neck. Mark. Go check him out. If you're on YouTube, I will put a link in the description to that video. As long as I remember, I will put a link to that video uh, to that video in the description. But your Mercedes has been in the minors for God knows how long. 28 years old, finally gets a chance with the White Sox and starts his career or starts his rookie season cuz last year he had one at bat and he got out. I think he grounded out. So, he had one at bat in 2020. Going into 2021, he starts 2021 8 for 8 with I think two or three extra base hits, one of them being a home run. Absolutely ridiculous what this kid did. And I think there's there's a chance he gets rookie of the year. This kid has a lot of his he has a talented bat. You could see it from this first week alone. His bat is good. It is really good. It has a lot of potential, which I mean, he's also a likable guy. He's a short, stocky guy. He's kind of like a Williams Astadio type of guy, but a better hitter. Well, like a more all-around hitter than Williams. So the kid it the kid has a lot of potential. I hope that the White Sox don't start screwing around with their rotation a little bit and start like pulling him and putting in someone else at that spot. Because with Eloy out. They need they need a new bat. They need another bat cuz Eloy Jimenez is I think he had a leg injury, he had surgery and he is out for at least 5 months. Eloy Jimenez is is known as in Chicago Mini Frank Thomas. So that's the type of potential that kid has. But without that in the lineup, they need another bat that can carry them throughout this season and if you're mid Mercedes we all know he's not batting eight for nine all season he's not batting at an 889 clip all season but if he can bat 250 275 all season with about 20 home runs and 80 to 90 RBIs that's a really good replacement for Eloy Jimenez. It's not Eloy Jimenez potential type numbers, but it is 
it is a really good step towards that. And this kid could have a future in this league. I know his rookie year is at age 28. But that's kind of perfect. He's in the prime of his career right now, which means if he can continue this, he could have a four-year stretch of being a really solid hitter. Since your prime kind of ends when you're 33, 34. It goes from like 28 to 32. So he has like four years of... If you get four years of this, that White Sox team is scary once Eloy comes back. Just thinking of that, Eloy plays left field. They put Jermaine Mercedes at the DH spot. That That's a scary lineup. It is very scary. And I hope this kid could actually keep it up. Because he took the world by storm this week. But anyways, let's get to some other news. Or let's get to my picks. Of this year. So I never announced who I thought was my MVP, my rookie of the year, um, in both comp in both division in both uh leagues. Shit. Man, my head is all all over the place right now. But I've never told you my rookie of the year in both leagues, my MVP in both leagues, Cy Young, all that. So I don't have all the picks. But I do have a few. Rookie of the year in the AL. Like I told you, there's a good chance that German Mercedes could take that can take that crown. For right now, I'm gonna say him. I'm going with the dark horse. Let's let's go with German Mercedes. Ride the train, man. And in the NL for rookie of the year, Jazz Chisel. Now I know I chose him for 2020, but the Marlins were being dickheads and they decided to keep him out for 2020 and put him in in 2021. So my pick from last year carries over into this year. The kid has wheels and he put that on display in in his series in his last series, which it was fun, man. He is a fun player to watch and he is a very well-rounded player also. So for the amount of speed he's got, he's still got a little bit of pop in that bat. I wouldn't be surprised if he has 15 to 20 homers going into the end of the season. So my pick for the NL Rookie of the Year is Jazz Chisholm. Now for Cy Young, I think I just have to go with DeGrom here. It's... It's uh DeGrom's just too good, man. DeGrom is way too good. And you know, he he's just too dominant, you know? He's got he's basically got everything except for a team that has offense. Sorry Mets fans, but it's kind of true. With Francisco Lindor, hopefully that changes and you start giving this guy actual wins, but for the amount this guy has given you guys, you guys haven't given him shit in terms of offense. In terms of the Mets. The Mets haven't given DeGrom shit as an offense. So, I feel bad for the guy, but I think he still wins Rookie of the Year. Or, Rookie of the Year. God damn it. He still wins Cy Young. And for MVP, AL and NL. AL... I have to go with I have to go with Mike Trout. I have to. I know it's the safe pick. It's a safe pick, but just to put Mike Trout into perspective, hopefully you guys are not sleeping on the on the greatness of Mike Trout. He has only finished out of the top three in MVP voting. I think once or twice, twice at most. The lowest he's ever finished in his career in MVP voting is fifth. (coughs) Excuse me, but the lowest he's ever finished in MVP is fifth place. 
That's ridiculous. It's obviously the safe pick to go with Mike Trout. Now, if I wasn't going with a safe pick, if I were to go outlandish, I would go Gary Sanchez. Bounce back season. I've been on the train for... I've been on the train since the end of 2021 that he would bounce back and have a great season. He did not have the best series against Baltimore, but he did have two home runs. I expect his bat to be electric this season. He went back to his batting stance that he had back in 2017 when he was a rookie. So I'm hoping that translates over to being a to being a top bat in the league. Because I hope you guys know that Gary Sanchez is still on track to being the best power hitting catcher in baseball history. In terms of slugging percentage, he is the best catcher in MLB history in slugging percentage. If his if he continues on this track, he will be the best power hitting catcher of all time. Even with that atrocious 2020 which again was only 60 games so you really didn't get the biggest sample size out of him I'm happy the Yankees decided to give him a uh, a, a new, another chance and didn't immediately go to Kyle Higashioka because although I do like Kyle Higashioka I think defense is teachable Higashioka doesn't have the best defense. He's got serviceable defense. And I think Gary Sanchez could be taught up to serviceable defense. Which so far he has not been that bad behind the plate. He's had a few pitchers that decided to throw shit in the dirt. He's had a few he has he's had a few wild pitches go a little awry, but he has I don't think he has one pass ball. I don't think he has one pass ball on the year. I mean, it's only been like four games, but he doesn't have one yet. So hopefully they taught him the mechanics of blocking and how to be basically a major league catcher behind the plate. So that's my thing. I think it's I think you can teach serviceable defense. I don't think you can teach the offense Gary Sanchez brings. You cannot teach Kyle Higashioka how to be one of the best power hitting catchers of all time, which is what Gary Sanchez is on track to be. So that's why I am happy they gave him another chance behind the plate and didn't immediately take the bait and go to Higgy. But yeah, if I was if I was not being safe and going with Mike Trout, I would go with Gary Sanchez for MVP in, in the AL. So now comeback player of the year. I think it's it's kind of a gimme. Comeback player of the year. It's gotta go to Trey Mancini no matter what he does. Coming back from stage two, I think. Stage two or stage three? I don't know. But stage two or three, colon cancer. Trey Mancini had stage, had colon cancer last year. Didn't play one at bat of 2020. Had like 14 rounds of chemo. The cancer, the cancer was cured basically. And now he's back. That How does he not win comeback player of the year? I don't know. So, obviously, comeback player of the year will go to Trey Mancini. And for right now, those are the picks I have. Wait, did I choose an NL MVP? I don't think so. NL MVP, I think, I think Mookie Betts will get it. Mookie Betts will probably get it. I don't have another pick other than Mookie, which is still a pretty safe pick. So, 
I think it's I think it's Mike Trout. And if you're really trying to if you're trying to win some money in bets, like if you're trying to put some money down on someone and get a huge payout, Gary Sanchez. And in the NL, I don't really have that type of dark horse type of guy in the NL, but I think Mookie Betts will get it. And actually for a dark horse, Ronald Acuna. I really believe Ronald Acuna will be remembered as this generation's Ken Griffey Jr. He is that special. He he has the power. He has the speed. He has the fielding, which he has worked on. He he has the base running. Speed. He's got the contacts hitting. He, he's, he hits for a pretty good average. He could be the Ken Griffey Jr. of the 21st century. And I am all, I am here for it. I am all here for it. So if you are going for a dark horse for MVP, it would be Ronald Acuna. But I think Mookie will get it. Mookie Betts is just a special type of player. And I was never able to admit it until he got traded over to L.A. Because I cannot compliment, I cannot give props to a Red Sox player ever. The Red Sox, the the rivalry is real. I cannot give them props at all. So now that he is in L.A., he is in the NL, and I don't have to worry about him until possibly the World Series. I could give him his props. He is one of the best players in baseball right now, and he will probably win MVP. Coming off of that big deal, I think that deal will pay off. So my MVPs and their dark horses, I got Mike Trout, Gary Sanchez, and the AL, NL, I have Mookie Betts, and dark horse Ronald Acuna Jr. So I went through my, I went through the Yankee season. I went through your min Mercedes so far, and I gave you my picks. Now, I think we got to talk about, uh, this is going to be fun. The downfall of Boston. Man, has it been a fall from grace. Losing three straight in, uh, Losing three straight to Baltimore. I don't know where they go from here. They're obviously not going to be anywhere near the playoffs this year. I know it's only been like three or four games, but you can kind I think everyone can admit they are not a playoff team. They really they really miss having a bat. They 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 lack that that bat in the lineup that they know will produce. They they don't have that. I mean, they have J.D. Martinez, but J.D. Martinez is very inconsistent at times. He he'll go on he goes on spurts. He'll have like a week of being like one of the best DHs in baseball, and then he'll have other streaks of like, why is this guy still in the starting lineup? Very inconsistent. And so the Red Sox really miss having that Mookie Betts type player in that lineup where you know, okay, he he, he may struggle once in a blue moon, but you know when he you know he'll pick it up. You know he's going to be good. And they really miss that. And that's why I, they're they're probably going to be a 70 if not 60 win team this year I could I could honestly see them getting over 100 losses that's just my opinion and I know it's only a weekend but I I really believe that they have a chance to lose 100 games this year and although that does bring me a little bit of joy I always love beating Boston when they're at their best. Which is why I always loved when we beat them with Mookie Betts. Just always had that like, yes, we got them. 
it was so that's so I think Boston is in very big trouble right now. And I really don't see how they could get out of it within the next couple years. They have Alex Verdugo out of that trade, but I really don't believe the hype, to be honest. And I'm not just saying that because he's on the Red Sox now. I didn't believe the I didn't believe the hype too much when he was in LA. I just don't think he's that type of player, especially when you're trading away one of the best players in baseball. He really, to me, he's, he's, he's a good prospect, but I don't know if his game will translate at the major league level. And I don't think you trade that type of guy for a top or I don't think you ask for that type of guy and give away the top one of the top players in baseball. It's just very it's just very confusing to me that 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 was the return was Mookie Betts. What what was Alex Verdugo for Mookie Betts? So the Red Sox will probably be in this. Ter- they'll be in this Baltimore Orioles type of area for a little bit. Now, on the other side of things, the Toronto Blue Jays. They just beat the Yankees two out of three. And some things I saw in this series, their bullpen is way better than I thought. This kid Merriweather, their closer, watch out for him. He is a stud. In the first, in on opening day, when he got the save, he was one pitch away from having an immaculate inning. And I think he was going up against the heart of our order. The, the guy has a lot, he has some good stuff. He has a very good fastball. And I think he has a good changeup. I can't remember off the top of my head every pitch he has, but I think... I know he has, the one thing I know he has is that amazing fastball. That fast, that fastball just runs. And the Blue Jays right now, I, I have been on record to say they're a year away. But playing like that, pitching like that, they could be, they could be here to stay. And I could see them possibly getting a wild card spot now. I'm not going to relinquish them getting the division crown, obviously. I think the Yankees will have that on lock. I think at some point we will figure out the the Blue Jays. But Vlad Guerrero hit a home run. They have really good defense. It's This team is very good. And they... And they beat us not at full strength. George Springer was not in the lineup for any game of this series. He has an injury right now. I don't know what the injury is. But he has some injury right now. And he's out for a little bit of time. Once he comes back. And they can now fill out the heart of that order. With George Springer. They're a scary team. And they could be a team that breaks a few that could break a few teams hearts in the postseason because that's they are that dark horse team right now they are that team that has that chip on their shoulder especially George Springer George Springer has the biggest chip on his shoulder based on the fact that he has to prove every single baseball fan wrong about his career because his career until he proves otherwise will be tainted by 2017 2017 will forever be a part of George Springer but right now it defines his career he went to Toronto so that he can define his own career so right now he has a big chip on his shoulder and we will see if he writes his own script 
to the end of his career. Because right now, his career is solely based on 2017. Because in 2017 is when he had the most success. He won World Series MVP. He won the World Series. And that's the only year he won the World Series. So, he really has to prove to basically every single Major League Baseball fan that he is that guy. He can lead a team. And I knew it. I knew he was going to go to Toronto once they were interested because they're a young team. They are a talented team. And they were a center fielder away. And he knew. I know in his mind he knows he does not like being the villain. So if he can lead a bunch of likable young players like Vlad Guerrero, like Bo Bichette, like Kevin Biggio, if he could lead a bunch of likable young players, a lot of stud young players, to a championship run, that could all but erase what happened in 2017. That automatically takes away people's perception of George Springer right now. So the team basically has a chip on their shoulder. George Springer has the biggest chip on his shoulder in Major League Baseball. Will that translate? I'm not sure. But they are a scary team, Toronto. And I just hope the Yankees can overcome it. But anyways, guys, I think I'm going to end it off there. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. I know it's a little bit scuffed. I am recording this at night. I'm I'm a little tired, so... If, if you heard a little bit of stuttering in there, I apologize. I will try and do better. I will try and find a better time to record these. But I do have to try to record within my, within my household's uh, time frame because I have a loud house, okay? I don't think you guys want to hear a bunch of talking and shit upstairs from the upstairs here, so... I will try and find a better time to record these, but anyways, if you're on YouTube, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new so you never miss another podcast, and if you are listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review, and if you are on YouTube, go to Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review, because once I start making merch, I will be giving away one piece of merch to someone who leaves a review on the podcast. So please just write a five-star review. You can say anything you want. I don't really care. I will choose one of you to get a piece of merchandise once we come out with it. We're still looking at designs right now. And we are. I am thinking about a name change. I don't know. Not just another podcast is very general. It's very basic. I'm thinking about changing it to something more central. Because I don't think I'm going to start. I don't think I'm going to be venturing out into anything too extravagant. So. It I think changing the name will be. I think changing the name could be a benefit to this. But anyways, if you are going to write a review, leave me suggestions on what you think the name of this podcast should be. And the best, you know what? Leave me name suggestions in the podcast and the best name and also in the comment section. Leave me the uh, leave me name suggestions and the best name will also get a free piece of merch. And that will become the name of the podcast. Whoever leaves the best name suggestion. But anyways, guys, hopefully you guys did enjoy. I will see you guys next time. Peace.